Hey guys, how's it going? Today I'm proud to present to you an in-depth look of the 2011 Lotus Elise SC. The Lotus SC is the supercharged variant of the naturally aspirated 1.8 liter 4 cylinder traditionally found in the Elise. This is going to be a detailed, in-depth review of the Elise SC. We'll start it up, show the engine, get an exhaust clip, go over the performance data, as well as show you a bunch of the unique aspects of the interior as well as exterior. And I'd like to give a special thanks and big shout out to Flo Fisker and Lotus of Winston-Salem, North Carolina for allowing me to come out and film the 2011 Lotus Elise SC. And so, without further ado, let's go ahead and start her up, let her run. It's a black exterior with a full black leather interior and aluminum accenting. To start, go ahead and turn the vehicle's power on. Depress the clutch and hit the little push button ignition off to the left. Simple as that. The Elise is probably one of the most engaging, driver-focused vehicles that you can find on the market. It's extremely simple and essentially just built for performance. For example, the manual steering. No power assist, but the driver completely in control of what the vehicle does. Both the 1.8 liter 4 cylinder in the hood, as well as the C64 manual transmission are sourced from Toyota. One for the reliability, but two, specifically for the engine, it's small size, high output, as well as low weight. Lotus also has done their special magic to it by putting short throw linkages in, giving a crisp tight feel for reverse, pull up, over and up. The steering wheel itself is also fully leather wrapped with perforation inserts coming across the sides, heavy amounts of side bolstering, and an aluminum frame coming across. The vehicle does also have two standard airbags, one over the driver's side and one over to the passenger. So it's going to cut on the headlamps as well as the hazards. Does have power windows. And before we continue on with the exterior tour, let's go ahead and remove the top. I'll show you how to do it, and then therefore we can get the different perspectives of the interior. In order to remove it, just pull on these little clamps here. There's two on each side. Once those are unlocked, this just flips forward and kind of rolls out. Then if you come on up to the other side, pretty much the same thing. And to store it, you can put it right in the little luggage compartment located behind the engine bay. Simple as that. And let's go ahead and check out the exterior, shall we? The 2011 Lotus Elise represents the latest revision of Lotus's pocket-sized, track-ready sports car since its introduction into the U.S. about six years ago. For the most part, changes are minimal and basically mount up to refreshed styling that more so represents its larger 2 plus 2 sibling, the Evora. It was designed as a car that could deliver supercar performance without supercar pricing. Before the introduction of the Smart 4.2, it was also one of the lightest weight cars that you could buy in the US thanks to its feather light aluminum construction and sparse creature comforts. So while it won't keep you comfortable on long journeys necessarily, it'll likely be one of the most entertaining track cars you can get for the money. Now the Elise has always sported a bold presence with its unique styling all the way around. While it makes it look eager to pounce, it's all very functional to decrease the coefficient of drag and increase the downforce to keep the car planted and channeled through the wind. 
whether it's the front air dam that passes air through the radiator and up across the windshield to the sleek underbody and pronounced side scoops for extra cooling of the engine and brakes, the Elise always uses the air to its advantage. Now as far as the wheels, the Elise SC comes with a standard set of 16 by 6 inch aluminum alloy units in front with 175-55 Yokohama summer tires and 17 inch by 7.5 inch wheels in the rear with 225-45 tires. Stopping power is put forth by 11.5 inch ventilated cross drilled disc brakes all the way around with two piston fixed calipers in front and single piston sliding calipers in the rear. This all brings the Elise to a stop from 60 to 0 in a short 110 feet. Now for those wanting to further enhance their weight saving abilities, you can also opt for a $2600 sport pack which decreases the weight further by about 20 pounds. This includes unique forged aluminum alloy wheels and anatomically contoured seats. The traction control is also finely tuned and is paired with sport tuned non-adjustable Bilstein dampers for tighter handling. When the Elise SC debuted back in 2008, it basically bridged the gap between the sporty Elise and its hardcore track brother, the Exige. Before, if you wanted a high performance car with a great complemented suspension, you had to sacrifice the removable roof, usable rear window, and what little comfort you had before. It was much less of a daily driver and more so a weekend performer. And with the balance of power and handling thanks to the Elise SC supercharged engine, removable roof, and better visibility, it makes it more pleasurable not only to have fun on the track with, but to cruise the countryside with an open air enjoyment. The SC gains its newfound performance thanks to a roots type supercharger that's slightly smaller than the one found in the Exige S. It's placed between the engine and the firewall allowing plenty of supercharger wine to enter the cabin. The SC also gains about 15% more horsepower and torque it shaves a few tenths off the 0 to 60 time of the naturally aspirated Elise. It also sports an 8,000 RPM red line with the capability of short bursts upwards of 8,500 RPM. You'll also notice the unique styling out back, simple, clean, and functional. Plenty of curves and ventilation for the engine, while the rear diffuser helps channel air out the back. A modest deck lid spoiler rounds off the top, while the lower clip sports the unique center aluminum exhaust outlet. Overall length is 149 inches with a width of 67.7 inches and a height of 44 inches. Total curb weight is a manufacturer claimed 2,006 pounds. I'm going to pop the engine cover. Like I touched on briefly before, power for the Elise SC comes from a supercharged Toyota Source dual overhead cam 16 valve all aluminum 1.8 liter 4 cylinder. With variable valve timing, it produces 218 horsepower at 7,800 RPM and 155 pound-feet of torque at 5,500 RPM. With its lightweight construction, the Elise SC is able to achieve a 0 to 60 time of 4.9 seconds and a quarter mile time of 13.3 seconds at 103.2 miles per hour. Fuel economy, with an 11.5 gallon tank running on required premium gas, is around 20 city, 26 highway. And as far as the suspension, it features fully independent double wishbones front and rear with BP anti-roll bars, coil springs, and monotube shock absorbers. To further enhance the Elise's slipstream design, the underbody panels cover up the majority of the underpinning so air passes through it completely without disturbance. The Elise's track-ready nature is by far evident on the interior, being one of the most simplistic designs you can find on the market today. The door panels are thin, lightweight, coming across you have your integrated leather trim, color matched panels coming across the top and the bottom, perforated inserts here, as well as little suede accenting coming around the door handles. With the large safety cage built around the Elise, you have to take your foot and kind of have a little bit of a special maneuver to get in. Essentially stick it in, let gravity kind of pull you in and act like you're kind of going towards the accelerator pedal, and then just bring your foot in and just kind of follow in. Same goes coming out the vehicle. Bring out your left foot, angle your right, and then kind of hoist yourself out by the wheel. Your lighting controls and push button ignition, little storage pocket, it is a fixed steering wheel. And I'll talk about a little bit more about the aluminum structure down below when we get to the interior portion. The seats are leather buckets with a fiberglass frame for the maximum weight reduction, perforated leather coming up the middle with white color contrast stitching 
and cloth accenting coming across the edges so you don't have to worry about damaging the leather if you're getting in and out of the vehicle. The seat is also sliding only for the driver's seat. Behind the seat you have two more integrated speakers, little storage pockets and interior illumination, as well as a little storage shelf. You see a little bit more here, the fiberglass backing of the seat. So, let's go ahead and see how she sounds. And we're going to shut her up. The Elise also comes with an aftermarket Alpine audio system, standard from the factory, with n CD player and MP3 compatibility. Modest visors. Your manually dimming rear view mirror, as well as a very simple to use climate control system located up under the dash. Your fan speed, different zones, recycling, AC, and temperature, all with aluminum knobs. Now like I said before, the car's structure is heavily based on aluminum. So when you have this main bar coming across here, that's your essentially your main support braces and you have these covers up for protection. If you look down below, to compensate for the natural position of your foot if, as if you're sitting in a vehicle, they put that little foot brace in there so you can just lean up against it, but they drilled those holes in it as well as the center brace here to save on just that little bit more weight. Now amongst the shift housing, full leather trim coming in across the back with your stitch D brake with aluminum grip. Up in the front also you have your traction control as well as the lock and unlock for the interior. Also over the years too, on hot track days, it's more convenient to be able to carry a bottle of water or something with you also, and that's one of the main complaints that people wanted a water bottle container. So, instead of coming up with little ingenious ways to fix one in here, Lotus put a little aluminum cup holder that just slides out in the middle with a little laced carbon strap. Modest storage in the dash, and as far as the radio itself, you have your presets here, USB, auxiliary iPod integration, and dash single disc CD, as well as hands-free Bluetooth telephone. Your intermittent wipers, turn signal and high beams, and a very simple to read analog gauge cluster with just the essential information. Alrighty. So we're gonna shut her down. And we'll check out the rest of the vehicle, shall we? Same patent color mesh trim on the passenger door. And while you do have manual adjustments on the driver's seat, the passenger seat is actually fixed. I might add also, the footrest is quite handy. Definitely makes the passenger comfort a little bit better. What a fantastic vehicle. Beautifully simple.
Well everyone, I hope you enjoyed this in-depth look at the 2011 Lotus Elise SC. Be sure to stay tuned next time, there's a lot more where that came from. Take care everybody.